I believe the church family should follow the clear teachings of Jesus dealing with conflict, church discipline, not just Matthew 18, but everywhere in the scripture. I believe that staff members are player coaches and must demonstrate faithfulness and obedience as an example to you, but that you should see our example and then join the process. And if we fail to do what is right, don't tell God, I didn't do it because they didn't do it. He doesn't like that. You do it because he said to, not because somebody else did or did not. I believe a church family needs to be prepared for all kinds of circumstances. That's why we're involved in crisis preparation. That's a physical preparation, but we need emotional preparation. We need spiritual preparation. And if I had to choose between facing a crisis in history without Jesus and with lots of food or having no food and having Jesus, I'll take Jesus every time. But I don't have to just have Jesus. I can have the things that God has lead me to provide for myself, for my family, for my neighbors and other people. I believe that our church family should be a joyful group because we have the joy of Jesus. Not because we have the happiness of the world, but the joy that Jesus gives us. That we are equipped to do things and we're not just not doing it. Any of y'all want to be honest today and just in your heart say, yeah, I do know how to share my faith. I do know that it's important to give. I do know that I need to be in the Word. I do know that I need to be worshiping God. Oh, but I'm just not doing it. And so we're missing what God would do in our midst if we were doing what God would call us to do. This is not a matter of beating us down with guilt. This is a matter of waking us up to see this is the potential that we have in the body of Christ. I believe we need new members training, mentoring of new believers. I believe that there is a significant opportunity through biblical counseling for us to reach people in the learning center and special needs ministries in our own church family and invite you to be involved with that. See, I, I believe God wants us to have accountability partners, to have accountability with each other as a spiritual defense, as a protection. I believe that men's ministry needs to help our men apply their faith, not just know it. I, I believe that women's ministry has proven to be important in the life of our church and continues to be. I believe that everyone that is born again believer in Jesus should be involved in telling people how to be saved. I believe that church leaders should lead out by participating in Jerusalem night and by mentoring others to to come and to be able to know how to share their faith. I believe that the church family should understand that we are in a process. We have been saved. We are being saved. And someday we are sa our salvation will be completed when we are glorified. But once it starts, nothing is going to keep it from being completed. We are predestined to be conformed to the image of God's Son once we have been saved. But we're in a process. And if you're not walking through the process, you're sitting there just molding. I believe that God never intended for us to sit in the pews and watch. And we all need to be pursuing God, finding out what our spiritual gifts are. We're truly saved people. I believe that we're supposed to demonstrate love to each other in ways that matter for eternity. Not just make each other happy right now, but ways that matter for eternity. Sometimes that may make you uncomfortable or me uncomfortable. But it's the way we show love. Sometimes it's uncomfortable for a moment. But it brings us to a, a much better place. I believe that everyone should know how to pray. If you're a Christian, you don't know how to pray. Oh, that's a big, big problem. You need to come and talk. I believe that every Christian should read their Bible daily and know how to study it effectively. If you hear us throw around the word inductive Bible study, you don't know how to study your Bible, you need to come. I believe that everyone in the church family ought to go on mission trips and they can see how God can work. It's easy, you go over there. We went over there and we did this and God did that and it was so exciting. And then somehow or another, in the back of your mind, you suddenly come to the realization, oh, he could use me to do the same thing back home. 
I believe you need to find new ways of corporate prayer to bring new life to communicating with God as a church family. I think the response was an example of that. You know, when I'm referring to the prayer event in Houston and how they handled that, I think we need to spend some time praying together as a church family. I think we need to avoid allowing worship to become a divisive issue. I think we need uh, to understand that as it stands, if the body of Christ does not begin to act and live in spiritual giftedness and demonstrate who we are, that we're going to have a continued leadership crisis. 10% or at most 20% of the people around here are going to be doing everything. Folks, we need more teachers now. We need deacons. And yet, guys, you're not going to be able to serve as a deacon until you are spiritually walking with the Lord to the point that God is going to be able to show that you're proven. God wants this church to live by faith in our budgeting. And in every other way. But to be good stewards of everything that he gives us. Don't just say I had $200 in the budget last year. Add 3% and turn that in. What does God want you to do in that area? Maybe God tells you put a zero on the page. Maybe God tells you put $5,000 on the page. And go to the meeting and see what happens. I believe God wants his children to have the best marriages. To have solid budgets and finances. To have the best child rearing skills. I believe that Little Cypress Baptist Church wants to offer those things to you. But if no matter how many courses and classes and opportunities we give. No matter how many sermons we preach. If a person doesn't apply it, it's not going to make any difference. I believe people ought to have a creative outlet to serve God. I believe that the church family should have a biblical worldview. And that worldview should decide our politics, our media and entertainment choices. That, that all of these things should come from our understanding of biblical truth. Okay. So the email says, what can my Sunday school class do to bring God's vision to reality? Notice I changed the question. And that is to obey God's call. You see, when we obey God's call, then we can see... These things happen. I see people instead looking for a way out. While people who are being persecuted for Christ are serving God on the other side of the world in incredible ways, we who are suffering little because of our faith in Christ are looking for ways to live our life for our own personal convenience, to protect our own time. You may need to take a spiritual inventory. Are you a committed disciple or if you said, if you don't know, come visit. They're honestly a spiritual inventory. I, I'm, I'm battling right now within myself that whether or not to bring y'all a spiritual inventory and just let you go through the thing and evaluate where the strengths and weaknesses are in your walk with the Lord. Yes, I would have to take it myself. What has God revealed and confirmed in our midst? Well, three. What's He doing in our church right now? Can you put your finger on anything? Hopefully you heard a whole bunch of things. I hope you heard a bunch of things. But maybe the reason you couldn't identify those things is because you're not involved. Are you motivated from within by God Himself to get involved in actively serving God in the church? See, all these things can be there. God can do all these things with spiritual giftedness for us. And He can give us all these opportunities. But we're not going to get involved until we get to this place where we are accepting His invitation to join Him unconditionally. God, I'm going to join you no matter what you want me to do. I'm going to go wherever you want me to go. There are no conditions on this. God says, what if I give you something to do that's impossible? And then you say, well, then I guess we'll just have to do it together. Because God, nothing is impossible for you. And then last question was, what can someone do to join God at work in our church? But well, here's the first thing. 
You have to be saved. You have to be born again. You have to have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You're not going to be able to work for God without God. Next, the answer to your questions are all with Him. And so you pray. And you're in the Word. And you're allowing God to direct you, to show you what He's wanting you to do. You see, what you're doing is, and where you're going to church, and where you're involved in the kingdom is not a decision for you to make. It wasn't even a decision for me to make. The church called because they believed God was calling me to be here. I had to pray to decide whether or not uh, I confirmed with them that God was calling me to be here. And if we had come to the conclusion that God was not calling me to be your pastor, I would hope and pray I certainly wouldn't be here. And if you're not supposed to be here, then go find where you're going. We want you here, but we want you to be where God wants you to be. It's His choice, not our choice. Third thing to think about as you think about what God has revealed and, and shown us. Committing to do what God wants to do unconditionally for some of us is a crisis of belief all in its own. I have never turned my life over to anyone. I am certainly not going to turn loose of the reins of my life now. Well, I hope that you've heard some of my sermons about what hell is like. Because as long as you hang on to the reins of your own life, Jesus said that if you try to save your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, give it to me, then you'll save it. It's all about the fact that He can change what He wants to because He loves us and what He wants for us is best. So if He pulls you out of retirement, if He changes what you do for a job, if He moves you to another community, whatever He's doing is not to hurt you. It's for your best, your good. And then last, and I'm going to tell Dan to come on and Betty, y'all come on. <coughs> You need to get a grasp on this because you're missing the purpose of your life. And again, I'm going to tell you.